Oh, it doesn't. Yeah. It Speaking doesn't. of all the snakes, um, let's uh, let's talk about snake breeding, man. How did, how did you how did you get into that? Was that something that um, you'd always wanted to do, or is something that you kind of slowly? No, wrote? it um, wasn't something I always wanted to do. Uh, in fact, I back when I started keeping when I was yeah. a kid, I was like, that's for like scientists and stuff. Yeah, like, right, I couldn't yeah. possibly do that. Like that's that's crazy. Like yeah. Um, and then I kept for quite a long time, um, and basically, yeah, just that natural progression of like, I want more and I want to do more. Um, you kind of get the bug. And especially when I started <laughs> getting into studying science and studying ecology, things like that. Um, and really started getting into the idea of, um, breeding for conservation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That really, really pushed me. That was probably the thing where I said, I need to start learning this stuff because yeah, right, okay. I was messaging people saying, Oh, I'm really interested about this, like small elaphid, you know, that's endangered, like broadheads or things yeah. like that. Where it's like, are we breeding? What are we doing? Like, what's happening? Yeah, what's the breeding program and running for? Such almost such. the first question that everyone asks me is like, oh, have you have you bred anything before? What's your experience with breeding? Yeah, and I'd be like, uh, kept snakes. Yeah, I've never bred anything. Yeah. And There's that, the door. <laughs> yeah, and so, like to get involved uh, in these projects, which I you want need to, to have that. Experience. You need to have experience. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. That was I was happy keeping them just because I enjoyed having them. Um, I certainly wanted to get into the conservation side of things, so. Uh, basically like care and rehabilitation of injured wildlife. That was always something I had uh, planned. Um, and yeah, it sort of like progressed to, if you want to do this, there is quite a need, I believe, for captive breeding of endangered species. Because yeah. sometimes like we have this idea of protectionism where it's like, oh, just leave them alone and protect them. It doesn't always work. And yeah. sometimes you really don't have a choice. Like, we, we need to bring things into captivity. Well, the, the idea of leave them alone them and protect them is, is unfortunately sometimes messed up In by unscrupulous douchebags who want to make money, yeah. first of all. And secondly, by the damage that we do to the ecosystem. Um, yeah. I guess sometimes fairly directly, but a lot of the time, you know, kind of unconsciously as a sort of secondary result of just yeah. the size of humanity. And there's so many species out there that are in this situation yeah, at the moment. Right. Unfortunately, with just growth and development, um, there's a lot of habitats that are getting, you know, smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, and right. This is this is just an, an inevitable um, occurrence that's going to happen. Sure. So we do have a lot of habitats and species that need our help. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately, like, I would love for the world to just be like, everybody loves all these animals and we're going to save them all, but that's just, that, that doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, most people don't really care, which is a sad truth. We need, um, basically, we're going to make people care who don't already care about wildlife. Yeah. We need to give them some incentive. And a lot of time, that's money. Yeah. So if you put a monetary value on something, suddenly people who didn't care before do care. And that's often the big way that, 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 well, sometimes that's the only way you can get people to care about a yeah. certain wild wild, wild species mm. is to turn it into um, a wild commodity. And that's, yeah. you know, it's, I mean, it's a sad reality of conservation, but it, that's sometimes kinda, the only... It kind of feels like you're making a deal with the devil sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but to me, the way I see it, it's like, yeah. well, you've got two options. Either we can leave it alone and tell ourselves we're going to protect it and then let it go extinct yeah. out of spite for not wanting to, you know, put a monetary value on things, which I totally get because I used to think that way. Like, no, yeah. this is, it's important because of what it is and not because it might be worth money. Yeah. But unfortunately that it's just doesn't, not doesn't so always play. I would, I would rather, um, I don't know, I guess. I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Yes. Because, um, yes. Just as, as far as the, the breeding thing, the, like the turnaround with that is uh, like, for example, um, public breeding for like the green tree python yeah all right so when that's now allowed to be bred in captivity um i think they did studies re uh, in like was it 2014 or something and um just a heap of them are straight up caught from the wild yeah right? so there's obviously so once 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 you open the floodgates yeah. a little bit to allow people to keep and breed these things People are like, oh, there's money in keeping and breeding these things. Mm. It's so much easier to just go to Indonesia, shove a bunch in a bag from the jungle, yeah. if you can, f if you know a hot spot where there's a bunch of them. So unfortunately, that makes you know that that comes with its own problems. It, it certainly does. And also, when you talk about um, sort of like keeping uh, genetic sort of strains yeah. pure, like not in breeding, yeah, there's absolutely. a lot of issues where keeping them as pets. That's people keeping them as pets is not the answer yeah but keeping them and breeding them in captivity with stud book programs yeah okay. and, and keeping thing. a strong yeah. genetic so population structure yeah, you, and you high you genetic do need diversity to put a lot more consideration into that thing yeah. uh, those kind of things if you're going to be actually doing this for the conservation side of things yeah. rather than just pets yeah um 
So, so you basically also need to keep a pedigree you, of absolutely everything you got going yeah, on. Yeah, essentially, yeah. Um, and I, I, I guess I just think that, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have a species in captivity than not at all. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolute worst case scenario, yeah. like we can get it back. Yeah. If something goes extinct, it's gone. Yeah. It's gone. Like that's just, there's nothing we can do after that. So if we can at least um, take these species into captivity, like with the Ompelli python at the moment, yeah, that and example. That was, a, that was a great story it, that they, they, yeah. they're breeding them up north now. And I mean, oh, those babies it, were beautiful. Just the Onapelli python, by the way, is um, a beautiful rock python from up north. Mm. Um, Kimberley area? Yeah, they uh, sort of all throughout the Northern Territory. Yeah. Um, so they range from quite north um, through sort of Arnhem Land, that's that's that kind a, of area. Yeah, that's um, a big snake. Yeah, basically hang out in the rocky, uh, sort of like the sandstone escarpments yeah, up there. Big the rock wallabies and stuff creeks, up there. Yeah. Jesus, um, they're, they're beautiful snakes. Yeah, yeah, so that's a perfect example where we know the species is... I mean, we don't know a lot about it, but mm. we're fairly certain the populations are declining. Yeah. Either we say, oh, well, let's just sort of protect it and see what we can do, and then we'll see what happens. Yeah. Or we say, well, how about we do that and we bring them into captivity? It's just another way that yeah, we can absolutely. try to conserve the species. Do you know who's running the program? I forget the name, but they're absolute legends. Whoever's running that is such a champion. Mm. Much, much props to whoever's breeding the Onapelli pythons up there in the Northern Territory. Um, shout outs to you. I'm going I'm to have a drink for you right now, actually. 